I'm now driving another Bentley of a completely different sort, but somehow strangely very much the same. This is a 2011 Bentley Continental GTC Super Sports. And much like the 1937 Bentley four and a quarter, it's a car created by the brand at a moment of transition. Just as there's a great separation between the Cricklewood Bentleys and the Darby Bentleys, when the Rolls-Royce company was split up and Rolls-Royce went off to BMW and Bentley to the Volkswagen Group, there was a bit of a changeover in some of the models that Rolls-Royce had designed and was building during their ownership of Bentley. The Continental GT was the first product newly developed and launched by the Volkswagen Group under the Bentley name. And many wondered whether they could actually pull this off to make a Bentley that was worthy of the Bentley history. Well, I can say absolutely unhesitatingly, the Continental GT was definitely very much deserving of the Bentley badge. And by the time you get to this particular variant, the Super Sports, boy is it ever a Bentley. So let's see how and why I think that. What makes a Bentley a Bentley? Well, obviously you want the car to be sporting. We also expect it to be comfortable and luxurious. And we also expect it to just take us to another level in terms of that combination. And thinking about what an eight liter Bentley was in its time, what the great Darby Bentleys achieved, this incredible effortless mix of power and sport. And that's what you have here in the Bentley GTC Super Sports. The car is powered by a six liter W12 engine, which puts out 624 horsepower, which is fairly astonishing. But I've never been a horsepower man. It's always about torque and about instant response. And this Bentley has both. It's got the horsepower and it's got the torque through a really wide rev range. 1200, 1400 RPM, the car in automatic, it just immediately responds. And of course, as you who watch this channel, you've read uh, my writing, you have seen me on Jay Leno's Garage, you know that I am a sucker for quilted leather. This has got wonderful acres of quilted Alcantara, just absolutely fantastic and so incredibly appropriately Bentley. And it's the way that the car delivers the power that I think makes the difference. Much like that 1937 car, it's perfectly tractable at low speeds, but it wants to go a bit faster. And it wants to do it in a very linear way. And I like linear power delivery. I don't like peaky uh, sort of uh, cars that, that, that demand that you whip them in order to, to, to make them do something. This is a car that is truly effortless in its power delivery. I also want to talk a little bit about the design, the style, because, you know, we also expect the Bentley to be beautiful. And the Carlton Carriage Company Roadster that I drove in our last video is certainly an incredibly beautiful car. And I think that the designers did a very good job with this one. It's completely modern and isn't in any way, shape, or form a retro exercise, but it has enough of the design cues to make you think of Bentleys, and especially the great Bentleys of the late 1930s and the early 1950s, the wonderful first Continentals, those great, beautiful, sleek, aerodynamic, fastback cars. It's also fairly tricky to get and keep that style in an open car when so much of the style is in the roof. The designers managed to do that here, I think, too. All in all, I'd have to say that the Volkswagen Group is an amazing brand steward. To think about the fact that they can manufacture cars as diverse as Volkswagen, uh, Skoda, Audi, Lamborghini, Bentley, Bugatti, and actually keep enough of the feeling of what these cars are is absolutely astonishing.
And uh, like every modern car of its type, no matter how sporting the Super Sports is, it's also got, of course, a sport mode. And in sport mode, you really get the sense of what's happening. You get this wonderful little backfire burble when you lift up on the throttle. Suspension tightens up just a bit. And all this power is delivered even more effortlessly. It's a remarkable achievement. And of course, just as the Darby Bentleys were powered by an engine which was a Rolls-Royce engine, it can't be forgotten that this wonderful W12 under the hood of this car is also shared by the Volkswagen Phaeton. So the corporate roots run fairly close to the surface. But nonetheless, they're expressed in beautifully different ways. There's no mistaking this Bentley Supersports for any sort of a somnambulant executive limousine. It's a powerful car that's meant to be comfortable but potent. Anyone who thinks that this car is not worthy of the Bentley name simply hasn't driven it. So unless you have, keep your opinion to yourself. The 2025 in the Rolls-Royce 2025 name referred to taxable horsepower. That wasn't the actual horsepower, of course, that the car put out, since it put out a lot more than 20 horsepower, but a rather arcane method of measurement of cylinder bore to determine the tax rate paid for the car by the size of the engine. Thanks for watching our videos. If you like these videos, let your friends know. Subscribe, comment, share.